When another allegation of sexual misconduct surfacing now against Russell Simmons, the music mogul. That brings the number now to 14. 14 allegations ranging from inappropriate behavior in the workplace to rape. Carrie Clausen Kaligi was the first woman to come forward, and on this very show, she detailed what she says happened to her when Simmons invited her to his New York City apartment. It was under the guise of watching a music video, she said, with director producer Brett Ratner. Watch. He continued his advances, and I looked over at Brett at that point for help, and I'll never forget the look on his face. It was in that moment that I realized I think this was their plan all along. There was no help that was going to come. Through his lawyer, Brett Ratner told the LA Times he had no recollection of Kaligi asking him for help and denied witnessing her protest the scene. Simmons, in a statement to us, denied the allegations of non-consensual sex and said that Kerry was a willing participant. He went on to release another statement, this time to The Hollywood Reporter, denying the accusations with, quote, every fiber of my being and went on to profess his longtime loathing of any form of violence and abuse. But once Carrie's story was out, more women started to come forward, including Natasha Williams Block and Sherry Hines, who sat right here in this studio and talked about their encounters with Russell Simmons. Simmons also vehemently denying their accusations. And now Russell Simmons is being hit with a civil lawsuit to the tune of $5 million. Jennifer Jarosik is the woman who filed that lawsuit. She joins me now with her attorney, Perry Wander. Jennifer and Perry, thank you both so much for being here. Thanks, Thanks. for having us. Thank you for having us. Did you see Carrie and the other women come forward? And how did it make you feel? I did. Um, I, I just took a deep breath and I said, oh my god, I'm not alone. And at the time, I, I, I wasn't sure still how I was going to handle this. But yeah. You met him years ago. He's now, he was, He's a music mogul, but he's now like sort of this lifestyle person. Yeah. And, and you're, you met him sort of promoting meditation and veganism and sort of wellness. Yes. Wellness. There were two incidents, you allege, between you. The first one happened when? Uh, the first one was in May of 2011. Um, I had traveled to New York City to interview him for my documentary film, which is on women's empowerment. And so he, he agreed to participate, to be interviewed by you. He did, yeah. Russell was a friend of mine. Okay. Um, I actually, he was a mentor. Um, I looked up to him. And I had great, tremendous amount of respect for him at the time. And I had thought that this was amazing. Here, here is this high-profile man who understood what I was trying to do to help women, who offered to give an interview. And yeah. Where did that incident take place? Um, that was in New York City at his office. Okay, so 2011 in his office. Yeah. And and did he did he force himself on you or what what happened there? Yeah. Um, so after the interview, um, he had asked my director to leave the room. Um, he had, he wanted to speak with me privately. So my director left the room. He was doing the camera and doing the camera, and he aggressively came on to me. He started to kiss me and. Then he raped me. Did you communicate to him you did not want him? You did not want to do it? Absolutely. Yeah, I, I tried to force him off, but it, it happened so quickly. And I just I just froze. I think I just froze. And yeah. We've heard that. We have heard about the fight, flight, or freeze from so many women. Don't forget about the freeze. Um, and in fact, I think Carrie said the same thing, froze. Um, in the moment. He's, he denies it. I want to underscore that. We don't know this for a fact. Um, but you went on to have an ongoing relationship with him, not, not romantic, but professional and friendly, right? I did. And you know so many people will say, how, how could you do that if, if he sexually assaulted you? Right. And, I, I, and, and a, a normal, healthy person would probably ask that. Um, I feel that uh, I was weak in some ways, and I feel like I depended upon him possibly to help with my film. Um, and, the, and also he was a friend, so it was all, I kind of blamed myself, and I felt that um, I'm also very forgiving. Mm -hmm. And I, I, he was a friend, you know, so I, I feel that I wanted to give him another chance. And, so yeah. she did, and 
something else happened, and we'll get to that right after this break. And we're back now with Jennifer Jarosik, who says Russell Simmons sexually assaulted her on two occasions. She's filed a $5 million lawsuit, civil lawsuit against him. He denies the allegations, and her attorney, Perry Wanders, also here. Let me just tell you what he said to us in response to your allegation. He says, it's absolutely untrue. I look forward to having my day in court where, unlike the court of public opinion, I'll have the ability to make use of fair processes that ensure justice will be done and that the full truth will be known. I did not do what this lawsuit accuses me of doing. The current allegations range from the patently untrue to the frivolous and hurtful. What I will not accept is responsibility for what I have not done. He stepped away from his board, he says, because he doesn't want to be a distraction. You say it didn't just stop in 2011, but when you went, went back to him in 2016, um, that he raped you a second time. Can you tell us what happened? Yeah. Um, so I went over to his house in, in Los Angeles and we were um, having a meeting and he pushed me and forced himself on top of me and I hit my head this time. And I, that was it. I left crying and I, and. So that, 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 that's the claim that the lawsuit is based on because that's within the statute of limitations. Uh, the New York incident is outside the civil statute of limitations, but within the criminal statute of limitations. So have you filed a, a police We're report? We're filing formal reports with the NYPD and the LAPD. Um, I've already spoken to the LAPD and they're going to investigate. Both cases are within the statute criminally. Got it. And only it's the just, Los Angeles one timely. is within the civil. Jennifer, you... You called Russell in the, this fall, fall of 16. Actually, he called me. He called you. He uh, called me out of the blue. I hadn't talked to him since the incident that I remember or any. It, yeah. Do you think he called you because he knew some of these allegations were coming out, articles on him were being written? I do. And did the subject of your encounter come up? It did, um, not right away, because I wasn't aware of any of the women coming forward. Um, he just told me when he called me the first time, he told me, Jennifer, I think it's time we promote something like your film, the, the Unveiling the Goddess is what it's called. And I was shocked and I was conflicted, obviously, because of what had happened to me. And when I found out, it was a couple of days later, um, my friend had told me what had happened. And I texted him, what's going on? And he called me back. And, he, and I said, um, he said, my life's being threatened and I'm, I'm deeply hurt by everything that's happening right now. And I said, well, what are you gonna do? And he said, um, I'm, I didn't do it. And I said, that's when I said, but it happened to me. me. And he said, oh my God, it did. I'm so sorry, where was it in New York? And it just, so quickly, it just came out of his mouth. And I said, I told him about the two times that it had happened, exactly where they with were. With him. He's, exactly. he's understanding you're talking Absolutely. about with him. Yep. With him. And, and then I told him about the two times. And he said, well, I call you a friend. And um, I want to help you. And he says, what do you need? And I said, well, I, I, I'm trying to finish my film. I could use you know, funding for it. And he said, well, I don't have any money but I will um, use my, my social media and I'll make a call to a producer for you. Mm -hmm. And he did do that. And I did speak with the producer and then I never heard from him again. You know he will say, this is about money. You know, she wants money for me to fund that film. It's a right. retribution for not funding it. What is the reason that you're speaking out? Right. The reason I'm here today, which has been so hard for me to do, um, is for healing, is for my own healing, is for my own voice that's been silenced, and for all the trauma that I've held for all these years, and for the other women, for other women to also know that they too can come forward and speak about this. Because healing can only occur when you face the trauma and when you, when you can confront it and speak out. And so that's why I'm here today um, is, is about this. I didn't know about, you know, Perry had filed the lawsuit. I knew we were going to do that, but I didn't find out how much or anything like that until Wednesday night when everyone else found out pretty much. So, yeah. We're, so. we're the hip hop industry has a whole history of treating women, uh, sexual objects, 
discriminating against women. We're hoping that the lawsuit helps change this. Um, and it's time that the hip hop industry faced the music. Thank you both so much. Hello today, fans. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking that button down there and click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives.